Honestly, I think the people would like to see my beanie hat. I mean, it's getting colder, so it'd be better for me anyway. I don't see how me being bald is part of the appeal. I feel like that's the opposite. We'll continue this later. So we're having dinner. They take us to a nice fancy restaurant. But you know, you sit down. The waiter comes over. First of all, he won't stop talking about everything. Where you're from? Who's this? Uh, what, what, how long are you going to be here? Like, we're not going to be friends here. The real clincher, though, is they bring the lights down real low just when they bring the food out. And they, they tell you it's for atmosphere. I think it's because they don't want you to see the crap that you're eating in case it's undercooked or you got something you didn't want. I think it's a giant scam. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to take a look at how you can enable and set up auto patch in your Intune environment. I know what they're doing when they dim the lights down. I'm on, I'm on to them. Let's just say that. I'm on to what's going on. Get Rubix, solving for the modern workplace. So what is Windows Auto Patch, right? Uh, essentially what it is, it's the automation of your update ranks. Uh, it's not just for Windows updates, you know, use it for use it for your Office suite apps. I will continue to call them Office as opposed to Microsoft 365 apps. I just can't say that yet. Microsoft Edge and Teams, right? So everything you're deploying from a Microsoft perspective, you can have them do it, right? And and kind of the goal here is, let's see, where's that? These, there was like some architecture somewhere. Okay, so this is essentially what they call the auto patch deployment journey. Uh, this is preparing your environment with prereqs. It's, yeah, we're gonna go through that. Enroll the tenant, add who to contact, so your admins, configured updates, services. Then apparently you're just kind of seeding everything in, right? Register 150 devices, review the experience communicate to stakeholders, register more, and then go more than that, monitor for one week. I mean, the goal here is that this, this map is more of just the journey, but to be completely honest with you, there's there's nothing we're gonna do here except turn it on. When Auto Patch was first announced, uh, I was a little bit puzzled because I, you know, I've been getting people to use Windows Update for Business in Intune, and just kind of taking the control of like granular Windows updates and Patch Tuesdays from like, you know, WSUS and Config Man, just, just pulling all that away from people seemed to be uh, kind of a challenge because everyone wanted more control. So when I first heard of Auto Patch, I'm like, well, now you're completely giving up the wheel to Microsoft and, you, you know, you, you don't have really any control over your trusting Microsoft to, to patch the environment. I didn't think this was going to be very popular, uh, but apparently it is. And I have a lot of customers using it and I get great feedback. And I think at the... I think the bottom line is it's one less thing you have to worry about. Microsoft is using a lot of data to determine the best updates and when to patch them based on certain devices. And it's going to roll that out through your tenant uh, so that you don't just don't have to deal with that anymore. And from a security perspective, it does close a very big gap, which is unpatched devices are always a major attack vector. So this is interesting. You can take a look on this page and I'll put the link below. You can take a look at the benefits of auto patch versus previous uh, I'm more concerned with the Windows update for business ones. So take a look at this one, limited signals and insights from your organization. You're relying on user experience, data, call center tickets, complaints, right? Help desk stuff. So, you know, your deployment, it's kind of hard to get a read on if you're ready or not. Microsoft is gathering this telemetry from essentially all their organizations and they have, you know, a whole ton of analytics going on to help determine that, right? Um, and if there is an issue, they're gonna automatically roll back to prevent any kind of end user impact. Whereas if that issue happens when we're manually doing it, we have to go ahead and uh, we have to go ahead and make sure that we get in there. How do I go from using Windows Update for business rings today to auto patch? So there's some considerations I could see um, and, and they're here that you wanna go over as well. So they kind of call out exactly what I would have said, which is user versus device-based targeting. Auto patch doesn't support user-based. So if you currently have user-based targeting, that goes away. Um, Microsoft Edge channels, right? So if you are managing Microsoft Edge in Intune and you have that in the app section, you know, they kind of take over that. And uh, while they use the stable channel for deployment, they use the beta channel for a test ring. So something to be aware of if you're not using beta today. Kind of the same thing with uh, the Microsoft 365 app. So Office is uh, they deploy the monthly enterprise channel. So again, if you use a different channel, you know, you, 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 could, you could essentially opt out of this and just have it do Windows. And 
basically the, the last thing here, I mean, network, obviously, make sure your network's not garbage, but preparing your policies, right? Um, you're gonna have to disable policies that will conflict, right? So obviously Windows Update policies, but any device configuration that's gonna prevent Windows Update for Business from working needs to be disabled. Now that we've got the boring and fine print stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and set it up. All right, so here in Intune, this is a, a new tenant I've spun up to test more migration stuff, rubixlabs.io, and I didn't do much in it. So I figured this is a good opportunity since I don't wanna change my main tenant from Windows Update for Business to Auto Patch. So we're gonna go to Tenant Administration and we're gonna look for Windows Auto Patch. There it is, Windows Auto Patch Feature Activate. So you have to give consent because ultimately Microsoft does make a service principle in the environment and they do take control. We're going to activate that. It'll take a few moments. All right. So it looks like it was activated. Windows auto patch is finishing background tasks to complete feature activation. You can continue to use the auto patch portal in the meantime. Okay. So they're doing some stuff here. Okay. So once the background tasks are complete, uh, under Windows Auto Patch, there's a whole uh, area here where you get messages, right, coming from Microsoft. These are your Auto Patch groups, which we'll go over in a second. Uh, tenant management. So any anything here that has is related to Auto Patch you'd have. But I just want to talk about the groups for a second. So an Auto Patch group is not a group of devices uh, or a group of users. An Auto Patch group, think of it as a container. So what I'll show you here is uh, a test. So the way it works is um, an auto patch group has several deployment rings in it. So these are groups that Microsoft gives you automatically. They give you a test group and a last group. So think about this as your first deployment wave and your last deployment wave, okay? And what you have to do is you actually have to assign uh, groups to this ring inside of group, right? So a group is like a unit. Um, so I have some assigned groups. I'm just going to throw a few of these in here. Only one. I Okay. So I'm going to throw my sync admins to that group. It's no devices in it, but if there were, that would show you. And we are going to throw, uh, let's say all company in the last group. Okay. And then for our update settings, uh, these are the rings they create to go along with it. So in this case, they're deadline driven right? You have deferral periods, the deadline and a grace period. You can uh, change these. So you can say manage deployment cadence and you can make the deferral period if you'd like one day, the deadline to be one day and a grace period of three days, let's say. So we can save that. You can also switch it to a schedule. So you can say, you know, I want a scheduled install, right? Um, and then from here, you go down and automatic update frequency so you can choose the week the day so monday on a second week of the month at 7 p.m you can do it that way too right so it, it really depends on how you want to control the updates for the group so you're kind of taking their groups and their rings and you're assigning them to uh let's put this back just for kicks there we go and you're telling them how you want to be rolled out. Uh, now for drivers, you can include drivers in there. That's no problem. Remember, if you have existing policies that may conflict, so go over those. Um, and because they're drivers, you can do a manual or an automatic approval and set those deferrals as well. So now that you have, um, you know, a, uh, a, let's say an auto patch group, let's go over what's in it. So you have the deployment rings, right? And the way they're distributed. Right. So those are the actual who goes first, who goes last. And you can go incremental in between. We're going to touch on that in the future. And I've chosen two groups there. You have the actual cadences for the updates and then your driver settings. And when you create this, it tells you right up here, it'll create a feature for Windows 10 and later policy automatically. Um, so it's going to create these servicing channels in the environment. So you can see here I have my group and it's processing. And under, under update settings, it gives you the option on what you want to update. So yes, it's going to do standard Windows updates, but do you want to expedite quality updates if need be, right? Um, that's something we do manually a lot. And unfortunately, we have to do them if there's problems. Uh, you can include your Microsoft 365 apps. Like I said, you can include Edge, right? Uh, 
so we can just turn those on if we want um yeah setting is updated this should be updated as well so it's going to automatically not just do windows now it's going to do edge and hopefully the office uh, suite yep all good so if we go to devices now and we go to windows updates we're going to see some policies get created update ring so you could see I didn't create these. They're already going through and creating them, right? Um, so this is my auto patch group because you can manage this from, you know, Windows updates in here. And it's creating two rings for me. So it's creating that test ring and the last ring. So it's going to automatically put them through the paces and then I can just monitor them. So it's definitely a different thing to get used to when, as opposed to just doing Windows update for business. And there's, you know, definitely a bit of setup that goes on, but I can honestly see the value in having all these kind of these units created and having the whole idea of the automation, um, the testing and, and kind of the vetting using Microsoft's telemetry. I could see that being a massive relief to a lot of organizations who just really don't have the resources to dedicate to this manually. And, you know, honestly, with all the feedback I've gotten from the organizations I work with who use it, uh, I, I, I would at least recommend taking a look at it. Right. Um, especially because you don't give up all control. Right. You still kind of determine, you know, who's part of that auto patch piece. So if for some reason you had some devices or users that you want to leave out and do yourself, you could still do that. So let me know what you think. Are you using it? I'd love to know your experience with it and we'll be seeing you.